I tell you what, this car is hanging on for dear life. It's on like 225,000 now, and it's just basically got loads of little problems. There's loads of little electrical things that are coming up. So I'm kind of over it for today. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do this. We're on the Defender today because we've got a trip coming up and I need to do a few bits and bobs. First things first, we've got to fit a CB radio. All the other trips that we've been doing, we just use like battery powered walkie talkies and they always die and then we never can talk to each other and it kind of sucks. So we've got these, which are like hardwired in CB radios that basically just act like walkie talkies. And it means that when we're on a trip and we've got like three trucks or four, we can all talk to each other and it's just, yeah, handy. I don't know if you remember, about a year ago, I fitted the aerial for it and I've wired it all in through the roof. I just have a coaxial cable hanging down from the roof and it's not plugged in. I'm gonna go for mounting this like down here. So it's on this like little bracket thing. Left with the bracket, so I'm just gonna screw that on. Panel, bracket, something like that. Mounted. We need power. So annoyingly, the only power thing this comes with is a 12 volt cigarette lighter. My 12 volt is there. And it, that just, that'll wind me up. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, cause I just don't want this on show, is I've bought one of these, which is basically just a 12 volt socket to positive and negative. I'll take the positive and negative that's coming off the factory one, splice into it, go up under the dash and hide it inside here. So you'll never see it. All right, bit of a rat's nest. We're, uh, we're, not, we're not gonna talk about this. This red one here is the cigarette lighter. Basically, I'm just gonna splice into these two and wire in this one. So then I'll have two cigarette lighters. It also sucks to film in here because it's kind of dark and dingy. So I'm just gonna get this done and I'll show you when it's done. We're back. I've also fixed my cigarette lighter. I had a new one lying around. So I've just fitted that. I've also just wired up this USB thing. And if I click the power, USB just comes on, that comes on, but also, hey. So we've got the cable coming in from the aerial, dropped ya. So, that's the aerial, screwing in the back, and then we've just got like a 3.5 aux, that's gonna go in the bottom, that's the speaker, and then that's everything plugged in. Last bit, is this, and it comes with this little mount. Oh my sound, Jesus. All right, uh, so we just got that sticky stick stuff, like that. That's just gonna go, like that. I've just super glued this mount on so it's nice and solid. That just goes there. Basically, just pick it up, very easy to grab, because your hand's gonna be there anyway. Hopefully Stu's gonna swing past in a bit, because we put his in the other day and I need to make sure that this all works. So he's gonna pop around, do some testing, job done. All right, the next thing is to do, okay. Hoi, this actually is gonna be very handy. I wasn't gonna to touch the Passat, but I am, because it's annoying me. Basically, we just got this through the door, which is the brand new Carly. Look at that. Very smart. Basically, if you don't know, this is the most handy thing that we have in the unit. So this is Carly, and it is a Bluetooth OBD2 reader. You plug that into your OBD2 port, and then you download the Carly app, and you can basically talk to your car with this little thing. I'm gonna plug it into the Passat because I've got a few lights on the dash, and one of them, I don't know what it is. So, down here is your OBD2 port. Plug that in. That easy, it takes about two seconds to connect. Basically, I got a parking brake fault. These Passats have an electric handbrake, so you just got a button there, which is your handbrake, and mine has stopped working. See the light? It's supposed to stay on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna press scan for issues. We've got a bunch of issues, but this is the one I wanna look at, parking brake. This says function lamp in control head, which basically, if I'm right, that means it's the actual like LED light in that button. So when I do that, See, it doesn't stay on, it like flashes. I just need to fix the LED in that button, which probably means I just need a new button. VW Passat parking brake switch. 
seven pounds sixty-five. That's kind of made my day because I was literally dreading that it was going to be something more complicated. And I don't know anything about electric parking brakes. If you haven't seen stuff with Carly before as well, it can obviously like do diagnostics, but it's also got stuff called coding. Coding basically opens a bunch of your ECUs and it tells you which ones you can change. I'm not going to go into it massively because I've already done loads of coding to this car. Stuff we've done in the past, we've changed like daytime running lights. Side markers US. Oh yeah. On? You can change the indicators so you can like one touch and it will do three indicates and then turn off. You can change it so the windows will always go up even when the car's off. So if you put in this code, BOCA23, that'll get you 15% off a Carly and you can buy one of these, you can keep it in your car, you can code your car, you can diagnose your car, you can live data check your car, you can use car reports cars, cars, Carly, plug your Carly into your car and do some car stuff. 15% off, Bocker 23. Thank you Carly for sponsoring this video. Stu's here, so this is Stu's truck, which is since you've last seen it, body lifted, lift kit, Bigger uh, tires. New tires, 10Js. Look at that. CB radio. Yep, we actually fit Stu's the other day. So. Hello. 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 <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Ah, oh, radios work, don't they? That sounds good. They do, they work. Me and Stu, communication experts now. Thunderpole enthusiasts. Thunderpole T600 um, demonstration professionals. Right, we got another piece of maintenance. This is a grease gun, there's a grease inside. And four by fours have loads of nipples and we got to put fresh grease in it because when you go do river crossings, they get all manky and spunky. Spunky like the owner. Are you ready for the most satisfying job in the world? I think. So basically where you got like UJs, you get there's some little grease nipples on top. What'd you do, just? You sort of just kind of like, it should oh. clip on. There you go, yeah, oh. then just pump and watch the grease just oh. spill out. Oh. Oh. You should be able to hear it, like air escaping. Ah, there it is, look, it's gonna start coming out there. Yes, yeah, Stu, that was so empty. Here it comes. Yeah, look how black it is compared to, that's fresh grease. Oh, there it is. That's oh, the good noise. 20 minute confirmation of <laughs> Land Rover and Land Cruiser grease up. That could be, that's one of those videos that would have like 1.6 million views, <laughs> wouldn't it? ASMR prop grease in. Ooh. Ooh. Right, just before I forget, let's do a giveaway. I'm gonna give away one of these hats. Very nice. We got. BQR Clothing Co on the back. If you want to win this hat, what you've got to do is drop me a comment and comment who do you think would win in a fight between 20 men with steel baseball bats versus two tigers. Also, if you want to buy one of these hats, they're available on the website, bokkomo3.com. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next thing with this, which is my favorite thing I'm probably going to ever do to this, and I'm a complete idiot. All right, so I don't know if you remember, a few months ago, I went through an ordeal of trying to fix the suspension because this thing is like super sloppy in the corners and it kind of makes it like really exhausting to drive. But a grand layer and some new suspension and all new shocks and springs from Old Man Emu, we fitted everything and it felt a little bit better, but it still slops around loads. I'm barely even like putting any effort into that and it just, yeah. Anyway, I'm a fucking idiot, straight up. I never even thought about this, but there's a bracket there. I don't know if you can see that. There's also one there. I honestly have no idea why this never crossed my mind, but it didn't, and I'm an idiot. There's no anti-roll bars, and anti-roll bars stop a car doing that. If you, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if you remove your anti-roll bars, you get more articulation, which is really good for off-roading, because it means that like, if you're in a deep, like, offset trench or gully or whatever, one wheel's gonna be up here, the other one's gonna be able to sink down to the bottom one and have grip on both wheels, 
Whereas if you've got an anti-roll bar, that will, it'll only sort of go that much. Anti-roll bars are really good for on the road, but obviously really bad off-road. Defenders are made to be an off-road vehicle. So how did Land Rover solve this problem? They basically made a really shitty anti-roll bar. It was really thin and weak. So it kind of like half-assed both ends of the spectrum. It was like really kind of not that great on the road, but also not great off-road, which is why a lot of people take them off. But there is a company that has solved this which I'm really happy about. Uh, what I'm not happy about is it's like really expensive, but I found one on eBay, secondhand, used. And what it is, ugh, this is a quick disconnect rear anti-roll bar. So it's basically like you can lock it and you can unlock it. So when it's unlocked, it acts as if you don't have one. And when it's locked, apparently this is four times stiffer than the factory ARB. So you can see that's loose. You switch it to four wheel drive and it locks. Switch it back, it starts flexing around. So I'm buzzing because this solves all my problems. Inside here is, it's, it doesn't feel great. So I'm gonna try and disassemble this whole thing and pack it full of grease again. Inside these are little star bolts. There's so much crust in them, I'm not gonna be able to get a head in there. I think we need, I think we need <laughs> to uh, clean that out. So this is a switch, so you can see there it's four by two, there it's four by four. So that's what you do, you just switch that thing. These are like old school lockable hubs. It like sucks in the spline. Back another day. It's the next morning. I've just left a load of these parts in soak overnight because they were covered in grease and all the grease was like brown and rusty and disgusting. So I've cleaned everything loads. So I've actually fully soaked this one and rebuilt it. That sucked. Uh, and then we're just trying to do the other half. Whilst that's soaking, I've got these, which are the control arms basically. And that in there is a track rod end and it is very bent. This vice has seen better days, but we should get it real tight. Oh, she's spinning. Oh, yes. Get in. That actually wasn't too bad. Jesus, man. How long are these? <laughs> that's, that's pretty bent. Track would end. All right, so I've cleaned the hub out and we've got an issue. That's a lot of play and it shouldn't have that, so. And this little gear goes inside there, like that. And we need to lock that in and it's just locked in with circlips. And I think the reason why it was all sloppy before is because this is the circlip that was holding it in and it's just kind of like it's just really shit and weak so got a new one much beefier one this is much stronger and i reckon that could hold it in a bit nicer this is all supposed to just sit in a low degree so that's gonna go there the circlip That gear is rebuilt and it's way more solid than it was. That's the back half of the hub. This is the front half, the locking bit. So this is all dry because I've cleaned it. So I'm gonna grease all this up and then we can assemble the whole thing. First things first, are these old school weird style spacers. And basically I've got a fuel tank guard on here and it, you need to clear that. So we're gonna put these spacers like that. Oh, 
this is tough. Yep, tough. <laughs> ha. Try again. Oh my god! I will murder something. So we've got to connect this bit to this bit, and that's with these. So that track rod end was bent before, so I'm just going to put a brand new one in. If I can get it open the bag! <coughs> this red paint also really bothers me, but basically I'm going to make sure this whole thing works and then I'll send it off to powder curtain and get it done black. I'm going to put that through there, that through there, and then that. It's going to go like that. Then this little locking collar. All right, I was supposed to put a new track rod end on this one, but I've spent about two hours trying to get this one loose and I can't, and it looks semi all right, so we're gonna go for it. Like that, fuck it. This is what we're looking like. It's just, it's chaos. And then we have the rebuilt hub as the last piece. All right, 17 on a gun. Let's go. Almost getting there, it's only taken two days. The installation is done. It's on. And I want to see if it works. <laughs> All right, just before I go and test drive the Defender, the winner of the E36 giveaway is about to show up any minute, and he's going to be here to collect this. I'm going to miss this, but also at the same time, I'm stoked to get a car park space back, so. Yo. Hi. So this is, what's your name? Josh. Josh won the E36 giveaway car. It's raining, so we're going to make this quick. And basically, who's driving home? My mum. Why? Because <laughs> I can't insure it. <laughs> We've got to wait a year. No, a month, isn't it, before you can get insured on it? Yeah, two months. Yeah, otherwise insurance is too expensive. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Enjoy the car and get him safe. Thank you. Goodbye, mate. See you later. Give me a message if you have any problems, yeah. but it should be sound. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> and it's gone. So yeah, he won that with a crying eyes tee, the one that he was wearing. So he bought a t-shirt, won a car. So I'm pretty stoked for him. That's that then. Congratulations to Josh for winning a car from buying a t-shirt. I'd be buzzing. Right, it's time we better go and see if this drive is any different. All right, let's see if this has made a difference. Well, if I shake it around a bit, it still feels very sloppy, so. I'm not sure it's working. Do some corners. No. That's definitely no different. Alright, I'm just gonna pull over and see if I have actually got it engaged right. Yeah, so that's that's supposed to be off. And that's on. All right, let's get some speed. Let's see if it kicks in after a while. I'm kind of pissed off. I feel a bit defeated. Spent two days, pretty much, rebuilding that thing and trying to get it all cleaned out and working and it doesn't work so uh, I could have just pretended that it did which I was gonna do because I hate I hate getting to the end of a video especially if I'm watching someone else's and you know there's no result uh, but I can't lie can't lie to you still boaty ARB's done nothing but I know why and I think it's the um, it's the slack on that hub that moves I think it moves like 40 mil 50 mil and there's no way that your truck articulates the suspension 40 mil on the road so it doesn't move enough for the anti-robot to actually engage it's raining and it's windy and i'm pissed off <laughs> i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to order a new one i've spoken to the company and they are back in stock in two weeks so i'm just going to order one from them brand new i'm going to chop this down to a learning experience sometimes it's just better to buy brand new we are ready for the trip i'm just going to take that anti-roll bar off and just drive how I have been driving for the past two years. 
Leave me a comment down below and you'll win that hat. Comment if you feel my pain. With that, I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and uh, get me out of here. Bye.